everyone. I'm Rayanne. I'm Master. We are Trust Nobody. And this is Trust the Process with Agent Giovanni Before I Die. Ooh. Hello, 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 hello. Nice to meet everybody. Thank you guys for having me. For Thank sure. For coming on. For sure. How How'd you do? Um, I'm not going to lie. I was in traffic for like an hour and a half. So <laughs> yeah. I'm like finally from? excited. Bro, I was like North Lauderdale. So oh. I'm like, yeah. Oh, yeah, same, yeah. yeah. It's supposed to be 45 minutes, but it was mm-hmm. not. So yeah, well. no, it was a bop. Yeah. It was a bop for sure. <laughs> I want to um ask, though, like, before I die, like, the name. Like, where, is, where does that come from? How did you conceptualize that? Honest, what are other names? It's it, it was, it honestly, like, wasn't even, like, the first name, like, that I had for the brand in general. Mm-hmm. I think before, I don't even remember what the name was to be honest with you. Something to do with, like, skulls and, like, like rehabilitation or some shit like that <laughs> like it was a very like odd name but mm-hmm. um i originally started back in high school so this was 2017 ish that yeah. i kind of came up with the idea in the first place mm-hmm. so it was pretty much me and my friends had this conglomerate we, we all had our own brands and things like that mm-hmm. um but what were the other brands my friend josh had adams and matter oh my friend josh had adams and matter um and then my friend Nikoi had the brand I Live Global, and then my brand obviously was Before I Die. Um, that conglomerate didn't really work out because we're all too hard headed, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> so it kind of like turned into at something. Least you're yeah, because it, it kind of at first, like we were going to have um, our own brand altogether, but instantly, just because we have all of our own minds, that wasn't really going to work out. Mm-hmm. Um, so that drop came out in 2018, like right after I'd graduated high school. Like as soon as I graduated high school, um, I saw the Virgil Abloh, like his first show for Louis, and I literally was just like, something happened mm-hmm. in me, and I just dropped my collection yeah. literally like the week after. So Virgil's one of your inspirations? For sure, mm-hmm. for sure. I would say Virgil, Raph Simmons are like two of my biggest inspirations when it comes to design and, and just life philosophies in general, for sure. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. far, that's yeah. far. You own any of their pieces, or? I'm sorry? Do you own anything by them? Um, I have my first pair of like designer ever was actually a pair of Oswego's um, from Raf Simmons. For sure. Okay. Um, off white, no. I I yeah. just <laughs> when 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 I was like really such an off white fan, I didn't have the money to get off white. Mm-hmm. So honestly, my first pair of like designer sneakers I was coming with the Raf Simmons. I was working part time at Office Depot, like saving my checks to get those. And like when I finally mm. got them, they went on sale by twenty five dollars. And I was like, I, I need to get these. You got it from the website, or you like? Re- it was it Saks Fifth Ave, and I had like mm. a twenty five percent off coupon. So oh, that's lit. I, 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 I muddied. I was like, hard. Nah, I, I need that. That's so lit. Hard. Yeah, it cost me like one fifty, but like to me, like that was a lot of money back then. Now it's like, damn, yeah. like one fifty. You're damn near gonna be paying that for a pair of mm-hmm. shoes in general. For so sure, yeah. Yeah. It it it's uh yeah it's definitely. Um, I guess kind of like my origin mm-hmm. shoe was like okay, like these Raph Simmons, like I'm a, I had like I saw them to this day. I probably pop them out like every once in a while. Okay, but yeah. they're like almost like mm-hmm. they're almost there. They're yeah. they're almost dead, but I just mm. I can't let them go. You know. You think you get them like repaired or something? Like I'm sure they have something like that. Yeah, but I feel like I just wouldn't even want them. You know, I wouldn't want them like touched. Mm. Like it's for just, sure, it's yeah. Just, like there's too much like that. I too many memories like yeah. Yeah. in that dirt. That's mm-hmm. whatever's on there. Like rolling louds. I had I'm dead. The world out. Are you yeah. tripping? The monster. Honestly, I was wild. Like, That's I don't actually know why. Crazy I don't know why. Like, I ever really <laughs> brought those out because they're literally like why the white, the white um, stances with the straps. Like, oh I don't know what what I was doing. No, I, I think a lot of people, a lot of people, are, like fucking up. They go to like a festival trying to like, be like be dripped out, out low key, no, like, way I'm too fresh, bro. It's, it's mm-hmm. like I went to Florida uh, a couple years ago, which it was, it was fire. Like the fist was crazy, but it's like, bro. Like I remember when Twenty One Savage came out. Fucking fifteen year old girls did not care. They just throwing elbows at me, mm-hmm. shit like that. You feel they me? They don't care. They yeah, don't yeah. Care. The Cardi people babies, leaving they don't like care. like shirts ripped and like shoes is mm-hmm. fucked up. And it's like it's like it's like this. You should have came in stories, bro. I think like I had <laughs> my first near death experience at Rolling Loud in. Um, Wasn't that Cardi? After COVID, yeah, it was the Cardi mosh pit. Like all of a sudden, lights turned red. I think I was like in the ninth <laughs> circle of hell. No, like that. Uh, <laughs> I'm like fuck? looking around. Everyone I know and love is gone. Um, like phone nowhere. Yeah, mosh pits will do that to you, bro. I'm quick. like, get me out. This tall ass nigga's like, fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, f- and I feel like the tall people don't care, cause like they when don't. I was first going to those festivals, like I had a, r- a really late golf spurt, so I got this tall maybe when I was like 20, 21. Mm-hmm. So at 18, I was like five, six, five, seven. Mm-hmm. Yo, you look up and it's like, s- if somebody's six two, you you can't see nothing. Like yeah. you you so cannot you're see anything. Like, 
um, actually, funny enough, my first like ever ever experience, I sneaked out. I told my mom I was going to a soccer game. I sneaked out to a Rob Banks concert at O'Malley's. Like oh. I think I was like That's fifteen fire. or sixteen. Yeah. I was fire. like, yeah, mom, I'm gonna da da da. My friends were already there, so I like took my duffel bag and like s- mm-hmm. put it under their car, changed really quick in the parking lot because I d- I didn't care. I was like gonna go see yeah. my favorite artist at Do the time. Do you wear any designer there? Definitely not. Okay. I was I was fifteen. <laughs> I had, I, had, yeah, I, mean, I, I had I had no bread for that. But <laughs> yeah, that was honestly the best like concert experience that I had because mm-hmm. and it was my first. So like I can't really like ever like forget that. But even that mosh like. I was like I said at the time like five six five seven scrawny so I was. Well, we're <laughs> we're from Bird, so close. like I know like you know Rob Banks the influence even just to see like him like you feel me as far which is crazy because like my first local concert experience honestly was so weird it was the day before my birthday and it was X type wow. shit yeah so I saw him like a I don't know what venue this was but it was like a local venue bro local as fuck and like. This is why I didn't I didn't like him at all because like yeah. this is during that time <laughs> where like he was on Twitter and like obviously he's fighting people and shit like that. Yeah. You see all this shit and you're like, but this nigga's a bad guy. Yeah, 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 you feel me? But my homies wanted to go. They were like super fans of him. So I was like, fuck it, I'm a slide, I slid. And then what amazed me, because this is before I even was putting out music, bro. I was in high school. And what amazed me was that everybody's performing. It had like Polari, like all these old SoundCloud Ooh, rappers, right? Throwback, yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. All these That's old SoundCloud rappers were performing this shit. And then when X went to perform, he headlined, right? It was so crazy because I didn't even see him. <laughs> this is a local <laughs> venue. Because, bro, everybody was surrounding him, like, yeah. glued to his body. He's just raging. And, like, and I wasn't, I'm not, I was, I wasn't, I'm not going to lie. I definitely one of them kids, like, posed on the wall, like, folding my arms. Like, yeah. shit. I'm like, I don't go fuck about this shit. <laughs> I'm hating. I'm hating, bro, 100%. And I could not see him. But, like, to be honest, it was so fire to see that at, like, such a young age. Yeah. And then know that, like, okay, this is happening, like, in my backyard, in my city. Yeah. You feel me? So like I, I I could hundred percent like know how you felt like sneaking out to see Rob Banks type yeah. shit like that's that that has been so far, bro. Like, I literally yeah. took the bus to get there, bro. Like I was like wow. any way necessary because obviously like my friends were already there and I was like like the bus like I got I got one fifty. I mean like I could I could get on the bus really quick and and, and get over there. It was like O'Malley's literally is like maybe ten minutes from my crib. Like it's it's right there. So it was like two bus stops. I w- and I was that's there. Fire. Yeah, that's like some New York shit. Yeah. yeah, just get on, just get on a bus. Get on a bus. I love Get on a train and then Which motion. I wanted to ask you because um, you got went on like a, a pop up tour. Yeah, type shit. You feel me? Amazing. Which was dope. I know you went to New York. Yeah. I, I I forgot what other places you went to. It was um all out of town was New York, Atlanta, and then Ar- Orlando. I guess we can count. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would say yeah. It's out of town. Um, and then we did Miami. Then ended it off in Broward, just because mm-hmm. you know it's home. Yeah. yeah, but that was like. My first experience of like, wow, this is happening. When the first moment I was like, and th- and if Ali was here, she could confirm with you as well. Where we were literally twenty one, like just doing shit. And honestly, yeah. at the time, I had no business doing that because mm-hmm. honestly, we were just like, it was almost like that that risk reward thing where I would literally save up my last whatever I had, put it into the venue. I would g- I literally would get to the be- the venue broke and would just come up like every single time like yeah. just because obviously doing a out of state versus in state is like in state you can do you know get a venue 400 and 500 whatever you'll make your money but x five five x whatever mm-hmm. but with new york it's like you're paying for flights team flights b and yeah. all that stuff by the time you get to the venue you're like damn like do i even want to do this I pop-up anymore tonight. like yo i don't know <laughs> what to eat. i hope there's like a 99 cent pizza or something mm-hmm. like but yeah. it, it all worked out because New York was that was my first time of being like, oh, like this is really happening. And the time we went back to New York like this last summer was like the real wow. Like this is really happening. Yeah. New York shows us love. Like that's definitely you like second home base. For and sure. You know what I want to say? It's funny. Cause we went to New York recently. Right. Um, to sell clothes to Ben. And I went to it was really it was dope. Awesome. It, was really, it was really amazing, bro. Um, we met a lot of people type shit. And yeah. I went to Photo Dome because um, Shay works there. Um, yeah. Right, and I'm meeting somebody. I met up meeting somebody named Iyanko when I was there. My dog. Right, my dog. and you know, if, if someone you're watching this, I love you. Yeah, I love so you so you, you know someone's fire when like you can. I met someone and we had a whole conversation about you. Had no That's idea crazy. he knew you. Wow. You feel me? Yeah. We had a whole conversation. That was like the catalyst. We were like South Florida, South Florida. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Adrian. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so like, yeah. Shout out Iyanko. Um, Fire always dude. shows very, very, very mm-hmm. real. Like, but um, that's that's that shit was so dope. I'm like, then that, that link that linked like to like Adrian's like <laughs> right here type shit. You <laughs> feel yeah, me? that that's unreal to hear because it's like, even even when the craziest moment I think I had was like last, the last pop up I had last summer 
was when I was like standing outside. This was maybe two hours before the pop up. Like we were outside chilling, smoking, and um, this kid comes up to me like, "Hey, like I've been following you since 2018. Like I'm so proud to like see what you've been doing." And I'm like, uh, "What? Like I'm a thousand miles from home right now. Like how do you know who I am? Yeah. Like that to <laughs> me Social was media insane." Is a crazy and then he was like, thing. "Like and then he knew all of my crew's name too. Like he was like, "Oh, hey, what's up, Ali? Like that and like saying people's names. I was like, uh. "How do you? This is kind of scary. Like how do you know <laughs> who I am?" And then the turnout that night was even more insane because it was like half, like it was like a good 30% of people who were from Florida that moved to New York. And mm -hmm. then 70% was just New York people that yeah. just, that when, just showed up. When we up. went, we realized like there, was there like a fucking great migration? Like there why did all of <laughs> there definitely, There definitely was a great yeah, migration. No, like yeah. It was so crazy to me. I'm like, wait, can you pass me the instructions first of all? Yeah. I really want to oh make yeah. a We're bracelet. We're supposed to be making friendship bracelets. Yeah, yeah. but the instructions are Super very hard. confusing. Yeah, I'm don't like, know what's going on. Is, isn't this shit supposed to be for kids? Like, yeah, you are a kid though. I am a little kid. No, big ass kid. That shit was confused for me too, so <laughs> I guess I'm a, I'm a kid <laughs> as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it says like we need to cut it to our wrist size. Okay, well, I don't know. Because one is like just cut it, tie it, and then put the beads on. I'm going to do it. Fuck it. All right. You, I'm going to do it. You're going to be the sacrificial lamb. Time. Like, try it out. Sorry. Yeah, but like. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll set the example. Oh yeah. My God, it's stuck on my arm. Please. This is already a disaster. Anyways, so, um, New York, do you feel like, I mean, when you did your pop-ups, do you feel like you were experiencing any imposter syndrome? Because you were like... All of the time. Like, that yeah. whole tour when I was 21, for sure. Last summer really was like, okay, this is like crazy. Because mm -hmm. at first it was it was like a couple of people, you know, we're cool, we're vibing. But once it hit 10 o'clock, literally was like, it was so packed inside that I had out the outside, like we were turning up outside. I had to go like from in and out just because I didn't want people to feel like, oh, like... He, he don't want to talk to nobody or da, da da Like, I literally was doing my rounds, like, in and out, like, on the street. Like, it, it was insane. I even had, um, it was a Puerto Rican, like, national, like, flag day or something like that. And we had, like, dirt bikes pull up. And the niggas was like, <laughs> what's going on here? I'm like, yeah. uh, like, I thought we was being checked for a second. Yeah. I'm like, oh, shit, okay. Like, what's Checking going on? Checking my like, city like, yeah. 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 so I, I go to, like, walk out. And he's like, and, and I'm like, yeah, like, I got this. I'm from Florida. You know, this is what I got going on. And he, and he just like, you want a shot? And literally gives me three shots of Henny. And then wow. by the time That's fire. that night ended, I didn't know, like, the last three hours. I'm not going to lie. Like, That's dope. Cause I, I really, when we went to New York to, uh, like, sell merch, too, like, we had got, like, a lot of love. Like, a lot of people just, like, just being, like. It's, gen it's so just genuine. Yeah. yeah just, like oh, I'm not letting y'all leave. Up to us, he's like, what are you filming? We were like, oh, we make music. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, like, bro, we, we were selling merch. I remember somebody come up to us being like, oh, like, y'all came here from Florida? Like, all right. I'm not leaving out buying, buying oh shit from y'all. Wait, you feel dude, me? literally someone came from Long Island to see Aster. Like wow. No, me and you. I mean, yeah. Trust you know, nobody. They, 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 he he said, I want to see trust nobody type shit. Yeah. I was talking to him like a lot. You feel me? But like, insane. Yeah, well, it was fire. It was fire. Like, I love New York. I got to go back again, to yeah. be honest. I feel like moments like that, you kind of realize like how fast like the internet can really spread things mm -hmm. like you just you never know who's watching yeah. Ever. Yeah. Yeah. ever 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 you it also lets me know like this shit bigger than me yeah. like it's people like if you care that much to like drive an hour out to see me maybe i've affected your life in some way so i'm yeah. doing something positive so i ain't good you feel me so you know it lets me know like just keep going you feel me yeah. if i can impact one person like that's that's, that's the that, goal that's what you it's all me? about yeah because to me like the craziest moments even more than just like someone being like oh like i know you and things like that is when it's like kids like, when it's, like, a 15, 16-year-old oh kid that's, like, God, yo, like, I see what yeah. I've been following you since XYZ. I'm, like, you're, like, 12. Like, <laughs> that's crazy. Because even myself, like, when we first kind of started doing things, like, I was just trying things out the gate when I was 18, you know. And I've, mm -hmm. I've had skin in the game for a very long time. Mm -hmm. So, for me, it's, like, I try to tell kids, like, if you want to do it, you have to just keep just your head do down it. and just do it. Like, yeah. if you're doing it to for likes and anything outside of I love this shit, you mm. will burn out. It's, yeah. it's sure. what it is. Like mm -hmm. you it's don't real. really love this shit. Like you will burn out because because it's also temporary. Very like, temporary. And it's like temporary, like by a fucking minute. Like yeah. everything on social media exists in like its own universe. That's so like it's not real. Yeah. Like it's I don't know. That's why I always say day. Bitcoin is not real. Like I don't know about <laughs> popular opinion. All of that shit just is not real to me because I'm like you can't see it. Like. Yeah. And I definitely believe in the unseen. Like, there are things, like, especially, I mean, with God, but, like, things that, like, humans place value into. Like, human life is already so temporary. Mm -hmm. Wow, not to get philosophical, but... <laughs> get it before I, I die. 
Human life is already so temporary, so then we're going to place the opinions and values and judgments that humans place on things that aren't even real. Exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah. So yeah, man made You're almost like creation. summing up like the, the brand like motto in, in, in general. Because really? I feel like Before I Die was really born from just like both the process of making clothes in the first place and just being like, I just want to do this. And mm-hmm. on top of that, just almost like the, the out, like just getting rid of so many outside perceptions because like you said, like we have one life and it's very limited. And yep. you can either live to serve yourself or live to service other people. And I feel like with the brand, like I very much had that turn of just being like, okay, I did this, but what? Ca- how can this kind of impact both my family, my mm-hmm. friends around me? And like, how can I put other people in position as well? Because yeah. I feel like for a long time, it was kind of where everything starts happening for you so quickly and so young. Like, it almost feeds your ego in all the wrong, in the wrong ways where I'm like, yeah. I'm in New York, like, and everyone's showing up for me. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I'm in New York, I'm showing up for me. Now the whole mindset of like, mm-hmm. especially why I even took this long to kind of drop another collection was I just felt like my mindset of just how I was dealing with things was it it wasn't right you know mm-hmm. like I definitely had to do a lot of like getting right with myself getting right with God to kind of get to this place because a lot of it just felt like okay everything and everyone is kind of just feeding my ego and I don't like that like yeah. my ego just got to this point where I'm just like oh my gosh like I can do whatever and then God will tell you no <laughs> it is all you me. will get like, humbled so you will get humbled quick. you will yeah you get and, 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 and will. I, like I definitely quick. had like those moments of where God like stripped me from everything of just being like hey yeah like you can only get I, I had that realization of I can only get so far by myself and if I'm not rooted in something higher than myself then I will be like everyone else and flow with the wind because I feel like that a lot of, and maybe you guys can add to this as well, that comes with just like the Broward mentality in general, of just like, oh, when I come up, it's me. I did it. You know what I'm saying? Of, and then when, it, when I walk in the room, I don't want to talk to nobody because I'm from Broward. I got a mean mug and I got a, uh, like, so, a, ooh, so I could. Like, and you realize, like, okay, yeah. like, I, now I see why all these people don't come up because, like, yeah. they all are, like, it's almost like we've done nothing. And, and even in myself, of like so much that I've done so early in my career, I feel like you kind of get to a point where you're like, damn, like, yeah, I did all of this, but if I want to maintain this, I can't be an asshole. <laughs> like, No, like, that's real. I and can't be an asshole. And some people are assholes. Yeah. A so, lot of them. So, um, How do you still get work? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I know Rand's from Miami. I was originally from Miami, and I came I mean, to Broward. I don't know. I'm not even yeah. really from here. Well, like, from you remind DMV. me now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I was born and raised in the DMV, and then mm. I moved to Tampa for high school, and then Miami How do you say college. JIT? Like, how do you spell it? I mean? JIT. Oh, J. <laughs> A J. Okay. <laughs> now, I swear Tampa people were saying it with a G, no? I, I, I swear they were that a minute ago, I don't I know. Swear. I, I heard that, and yeah. I was like, I don't know anyone. The thing is, the people who introduced me to JIT were also from South Florida, so. Yeah. Okay. The okay, pipeline was I just, always I just had, there. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's a real question. Don't don't That's real. I didn't know it was a Tampa thing. I was so ashamed. Was so but ashamed. I, remember, I remember when I was first starting off making music, and I remember feeling like I ain't had no one to look up to. Especially in Broward. Yeah. Especially these people throwing shows. Like, you know, I feel like they weren't trying to help out. Especially, especially, especially because. It's, it's almost like just pay, like, pay your way. Like, yo, very heavily. I remember, like, especially, like, these, some of these shows were, like, 20 plus people. You feel me? Like, artists <laughs> in the show. And it's, like. Three different there's, headliners. Like, <laughs> there's no way this show's being run, ran efficiently. Yeah. This is, like, no a, way. this is a cash grab. This, yeah. We're going to make 20 performers pay us. Yeah. You feel me? So then we and can, then like, and pay the venue. And you like, 300, 400, 500. Of course, like, yeah. Make, making like these performers pay, wow. sets are getting skipped because they're running out of time. Wow. Shit was not like for the art, you feel me? It was At for all. money. And I felt like, you know, when I was going out, I was watching this and I was looking at other artists that I really liked and like they were in helpful at all. So I like had to do my own thing, but I knew I couldn't do it myself. That's why, you know, yeah. I was working with 10 Days a lot. You feel me? Like we, we Shout out 10 Days. Shout out 10 love Days. With, if you're watching you this, me? I love you 10 Days. Yeah. No, real. So it's like, it's like we started building community. You feel me? Then even with Deshaun doing like the live and local stuff. Shout out live and local. Shout you out Deshaun. I'm, so, I'm, I'm shouting out a lot of people, but like these, these are people that have definitely impacted me and I, I, I never, I always want to pay my dues. You know? yeah. yeah. So it was like, it's like that shit was happening. That shit was happening. Right? Where people be on the wall, no one wants to talk, no one wants to connect, no one yeah. has time for you. And it's like through that, I feel like, you know, I definitely can say I'm blessed because I, I was on the side of Broward where like the scene was like being fostered for art, being yeah. fostered for creativity, fostered to like, you know, help other people. Even greatness is like, does a lot of, lot, lot of um, good greatness. stuff for Broward as well. So like, you know, I know you were talking about, bro, and I, I hated it. I hated it. But I could say like it, that definitely like a lot of that shit changed, which I'm very, very happy about yeah. type shit. Because it's, it's just 
like I feel like the art in general, the art scene in general in Broward is changing in Miami, and I feel like maybe just that could just be an influence of just how powerful social media is now, mm-hmm. where almost everyone is a, is a influencer. Like everyone has dabbled in music, everyone dabbles in clothes, whatever. But even more now, just like, creativity. Like you know, yeah. yeah, you know, everyone is posting "Get Ready with Me"s and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not all their outfits are good. I have to say that, but like, <laughs> like I don't want to get ready with you. I'm sorry, that <laughs> fit is not good. Bro. Like, I mean, yeah, yeah, like yeah. I be, I'm like okay, like I, well, I like this. Pan, I, it makes sense, you know. Yeah. But sometimes I'd be like, yo. But my thing, I have to say this. I'm glad we brought this up. Why do they be in their underwear, bro? Like, why do you start Chill. off to get ready with me, lie. booty naked? Like, I ain't gonna lie. I gotta. Like, nah, I ain't gonna yeah, lie. for clicks. I'd be like, okay, why do you have no clothes on right now? No, like, no, no. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. I got a homie what like, and I feel like he first. I feel like he, I feel like he, he be dressed too. But I remember he started doing that shit like on TikTok, and then me and my girl like, is that man his? Is he in his tidy whities or are we tweaking like, right now? <laughs> like, is he? Th- am I tweaking right now? Like, and I'm like, I'm like, I ain't gonna say nothing, bro. Like, do your thing, like you know, if it's getting them views, but like, you, know, you can start <laughs> off. With, you can start off with the pants, no, bro. Actually, like, go like, hold please, you. or at least like box Put them shirt. In like, front, you know me like box shirt. Yeah. yeah, like oh I don't know, no, but I feel, I feel what you're saying. Like, I'm like, yeah, I quit that um, shit, man. Do you like, think like? I mean, in terms of like fashion and stuff, this is I don't know. I don't know if this really relates to the imposter syndrome thing, but like I feel like a lot of the time because people have access to so much information and knowledge, yeah. you know, fashion is a pretty elitist industry, you know. For sure. Kind of like if you don't know the knowledge, like you're not really taken seriously. If you yeah. don't know every single piece from every single collection of your yeah. favorite designer, like you're a fucking poser. Yeah. But do you think like social media has kind of, you know, I don't know, fostered that kind of like, oh, you're a poser mentality Definitely. Like, and haterism. Some Honestly, sometimes I feel like we should <laughs> bring gatekeeping back on certain things <laughs> because there's certain things I'm like, okay. No, there's actually, that is like, very true. Like, I'm sorry, but like the purity of the art is almost like getting degraded because oh, there's yeah. just so everyone is in here. Like yeah. everyone is in. Easy and access. So and I don't feel like that's necessarily a bad thing, but like. People just, I feel like the perception of things get watered down because there's just so much not good art out. Like, yeah. for example, like the Instagram brands who just like run ads, they put a, gr- mm-hmm. a girl on a t-shirt with, uh, I don't yep. know, some like Arabic writing or something like ah. that. It's like, boom, it blows up. And then like, you see something like before I die and then someone can, the perception of just like, oh, like this and brand has less followers than this brand. This is not like Bro, XYZ. And then you, and then you, you know, start seeing like the fucking copycats on Timu. Like yes. every, oh my oh God. God. <laughs> the Timu copycats. How long do you think before uh, before I die gets on? I'm, I'm giving it six months, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Honestly, like with this, like just to add a little promo for myself with this run I'm about to go on, like mm-hmm. um, just with the brand, like because we're also starting Femme is our first drop, like our first official drop for women's wear is literally mm-hmm. next two weeks from now. Oh my god. Five. About so yeah, like the full you wanna give the date? You wanna go to the camera and give him yeah. a date real quick? It is April twenty fourth, I believe. Last okay. time I checked. Five. April twenty fourth is Ooh. the date. Um very excited because we have mm-hmm. it's nine pieces, one of like the biggest collections I did, but nine pieces as in like nine mm-hmm. with variants. So it's really like Boom. eighteen pieces or something like mm-hmm. that. Um yeah, women's wear, men's wear. Um, but I'm very excited for it, honestly. Do you want to do a fashion show for this or anything? Because I, I went to your last fashion show. That shit was fire. Like, honestly, it was, it was crazy to see. It's crazy to see because I've known you since you were legit. You still yeah. legit. I ain't going <laughs> to yeah. lie. So I, just, I, remember, I remember seeing you, like, give out, like, these magazines at Hippie Haven yeah. type shit. I don't know how old you were at that time, but that was a it's while ago. Like, it might have been during COVID oh or prior. I remember coming to, like, um... I remember I have this one shirt that I went to like this pop up in Fort Lauderdale during COVID that you threw. I went to I, a couple of your stuff like and it's like crazy seeing like the growth and then seeing that Thank fashion you. show was like honestly like amazing to see that um you guys ran that. Is this something like another event you want to do for this um drop or anything? Def- I definitely want to do a fashion show. Um, originally this drop was supposed to be kind of like a lot sooner, like right after the fashion show. But me just being me and Ali being Ali, we're both we both like looked at each other like, yeah, we don't want to put this out. Like yeah. as much as everyone loved the pieces so much, we knew how much not even just like better we could do, but we just knew it was underdeveloped. Like what everyone saw was definitely more like a fifty percent of what it could have been. Yeah. Like fifty percent of just like, okay, like we had un- a lot of unfinished ideas of just things, you know, manufacturers couldn't get back to us in time. Mm-hmm. Um, print shops couldn't get back to us in time on like you know our seamstress like couldn't get back to it in time so I think a lot of that came with just okay like we can take a, our time like take our time like we're rushing ourselves you yeah. know um, 
So this really came up just like sitting down. There's maybe was like five or six versions for this. I'm not gonna lie. Like this collection definitely took a, a lot of time to kind of fully put together. But I think we're now like at this 80% line and not trying to make mm -hmm. things too perfect. Because mm -hmm. with just me being a perfectionist and Ali being a perfectionist, we definitely tend to kind of overbake things. And then by the time it's ready to come out, we hate it. Mm. And I think, <laughs> like, that's just me that's being completely honest. That's happened to me with like, cookies. I'm not going to lie. No, I really <laughs> had to learn that. I swear to God, I, yeah. I just had Bar. the realization that, like, cooking is all about, like, measurements and timing. Yeah. Like, and it sounds so, like, yeah, fucking yeah, duh, you stupid yeah. ass bitch. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it really is, because, like, if you take the cookies out too late, then they're going to cool down, and they're going to be hard, and they're not going to be gooey on the yeah. inside, and, like, that's really what you yeah. want, you know yeah. what I mean, that yeah. kind of quality. Yeah. But d what do you think, like, you learned from that process about yourself? Take my time. Yeah. I, I, I feel like I almost get into this mode where if I'm not doing a million things at once, I feel like I'm doing nothing. Just oh, my God, same. my whole come up was just doing pop-ups as much as, like, doing pop-ups, doing drops as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And now that we're in a space where we don't really have to do, we, I don't have to do that anymore. Like, I yeah. try to, like, tell myself, like, yeah, I can wait. Like, people are going to buy the You're clothes. You're still in, like, survival mode. Yeah, and I don't, like, I, I feel like it's, some things about it is very good because, like, that work ethic is still so there, and I don't want to lose this work ethic, honestly, ever. Mm -hmm. But definitely, now that I have a team, because I to add, um, I did, you know, I have Sebi behind the camera. Um, my digital photographer, I have a film photographer, I have a seamstress, a full sty a styling crew, mm -hmm. um, and obviously Ali runs the women's wear, I have a videographer, a director, so mm -hmm. we you definitely have now have a, a, yeah, a big team to kind big of like team. help Facilitate me. Facilitate different yeah, things, yeah. For sure, because now it's like, I can kind of sketch something, send it out, and we all figure it out kind of in unison, lookbooks mm -hmm. and all of that. That versus is so cool. Versus in the yeah. past, it was more like, oh my gosh, like I have to hit up the manufacturer. I also have to hit up the photography studio. I have to mm -hmm. hit up the, the print shop. And You're doing everything yeah. on your own. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and I think that's another thing too that a lot of people have to kind of understand as, as soon as you can. And honestly, even if you can't pay them at first and they just love what you're doing, mm -hmm. get help. Because mm -hmm. it'll, it'll grow you a lot faster. No, that's Get we help. we know this. We yeah. know even just from being solo artists, like yeah. mm -hmm. like my own, like there's there's a there's a level of things that I was not doing by by, by Astrid Gemini. Yeah. I wasn't yeah. doing. I was good at booking my own shows. I was good at you know putting the music out, and making the music. But on the music side of certain things, like I like the business side of it, I wasn't. I didn't care to do that, bro. I just want to perform, Brilliant. make music. But it's like, yeah. and I'm it's, the opposite. Yeah, there's so much we need to do. She's helped me out so much in terms of just like reaching out to people, like to like you know market something or like to like um, place something somewhere. You feel me? Or yeah. just what? She helped me out so much. So it's like I I really couldn't do a lot of stuff that just somebody does without Ryan or even just you know our engineer um, who was so shout out to Ferris. He's so nice to us, um, mm -hmm. working with us and, and stuff like that. You know, Aaron. She's just like a lot of our our pictures and stuff like that. Like. Yeah, it's important yeah, to have a team. a team. It's important to have reliable yeah. people around you that you, you can look at because I'm telling you a lot of shit. When you try to do everything by yourself, it's like, what's priority? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do I got to put first? How do you feel like you learn to trust your team? Like, did you go through things? That's trials a great question. Oh, my gosh. That is I don't know. I just want to know because the thing is, like, I mean, you seem like the kind of person that's, like, super particular with your vision, and yeah. I'm the same. I'm uh, such a control freak. Like, he's, like, do you think the layout looks good? I'm like, yeah. And then two seconds later, I'm like reorganizing yeah. the candles. And I think that, like you said, like the honesty is also a big part of it too, mm -hmm. of just being like, I can, I, I feel like there's no, because I, I feel like sometimes in team dynamics, there's almost a sense of like, okay, one person feels like their ego is so much higher that they can't, on top of them not being able to kind of tell people what's right from wrong, they also can't take like criticism. Criti exactly, like, yes, yes. That's the yes. biggest right. thing is I want, I, don't want, I want everybody to be completely honest with me at all times. Mm -hmm. If you feel like something is not good, it's not good. Like, you can tell me that. Mm -hmm. I might not agree, but I, I want to <laughs> hear it. No, yeah. And that's real. No, that's you know, real. That's real as fuck, yeah. Because I, I want to, mm -hmm. I always like second opinions because it makes, yeah. it, it kind of like always makes sure like my brain is not like in that sense of like, no, I'm right, you're yeah, wrong. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I never want to get on that sense because I always hear horror stories, especially within like the fashion industry of just like designers just having their models do crazy shit or like their mm -hmm. team like do crazy. Have rough you ever hours seen The Devil like Wears that. Prada? No. Oh my I know. God, that sounds what? crazy, but that's no, like I'm a not. top tier fashion movie. That's like the. Oh my God, it's so good. But yeah, please, please don't, don't, please don't watch it. Guys. Listen, 
it's iconic okay Outside i love cult classic movies like yeah, that and just fashion movies they're super like i think the whole like fashion industry is super like complex interesting and like introspective like For sure. model of like an industry because there's so much so many ethical problems yeah <laughs> so many ethical problems within fashion do you think like i don't know do you do you see things within the industry you're like I'm um, I can't I have to avoid that yeah. by all means necessary. Uh, honestly, a lot of the kind of ultra celebrity driven brands, I think mm -hmm. that's the one you thing. You want to call any out? Yeah, I'm about to say let's let's, let's get real. Let's get real. Uh, fuck them. So real. Uh, <laughs> I, I I don't think I need to call any out because I feel like it's so prevalent. Like you just know mm -hmm. like okay the like to say simply when you know like the artist is being pushed more than the clothes itself you know there's a problem like if when you're mm. talking about this show had cardi in it had this person mm -hmm, in it, like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay the clothes I'll just see like that. yeah okay like can we talk about the, the clothes? clothes can't stand for themselves yeah exactly yeah. and i feel like uh, that's yeah. another thing of where a lot of brands kind of make the mistake of not going people first because obviously celebrities will always We'll always bring in face, whatever. But I feel like a lot of, especially with up and coming brands, if you're an up and coming brand and all you're known for is having celebrities in your stuff, you have to keep that going. Mm -hmm. So as soon as Offset stops picking up the phone and <laughs> the Cardi <laughs> stops picking up the phone, what are you going to do? Because yeah. no one knows your clothes for your clothes. They know Make your clothes, clothes. For, because Cause Cardi put it on. Because drinking it. Yeah, because yeah. drinking it. Like, yeah. <laughs> I just okay. thought about it. I didn't ask <laughs> no, Said what no. you needed to say. Well, yeah. It's a good one. Well, what I want to say though, like about 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 like you, right? I always this clip I love is like when Young Thug's like sitting at this fashion show, right? And then like the <laughs> model like walks by, and then Young Thug just gets up, fixes yeah. his fucking. That that's just iconic. Like, could you be a stylist? Like, would you ever try to For do sure. that before? For sure. Yeah. I I would definitely want to like, cause I I really want to get into everything that I can put my hands on when it comes to the fashion, just all different sides. Like, even photography myself. Like, I shot a lot of my own yeah, photography your creative for, direction for a very, is fire. For a very yeah. long time. Thank you. I know. I know. Honestly, that last little trailer that was so cool. I know. Honestly, like so for some stuff, like <laughs> when we were first together, I I just sent some of your videos around. Like, oh, we sh we we should use this type of style, like as a, as, a, as an inspiration. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Like, thank you. Thank yeah. You. yeah. <laughs> and, and I think honestly, like like I said, a lot of that came from kind of my inspirations from Wrath, especially because mm. I think now, um, and just in general, like a, a lot of people don't understand is that it takes at le before you get good at becoming a fashion designer, you have to honestly put in at least ten years. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of people don't understand that skin in the game of like before you really have your own distinct style, it takes at least ten years. Yeah. Me being like halfway there. I'm even learning of like, okay, like with this next collection, like it's honestly completely different from anything I've put out before because of that, oh, I'm kind of like getting into that stage where I have my own distinct style. Mm -hmm. Because in the beginning, it's like you're, you can very much be kind of like lost in the sauce of just like, okay, yeah. like this trend is going on and this mm -hmm. is going on. But honestly, the first yeah. thing I would say for anybody who wants to be a fashion designer, fuck all of that yeah if you want to trends. do it, if you want to do it like do a one of one and like show you like kind of almost like okay this is the trend that's going on i can do mm -hmm. this trend better than everybody else but i yeah. don't want to sell it because i'm just mm -hmm. that fire like no literally. i would suggest people doing that more than the like okay uh like full zip hoodies are popping right now i need to make mm -hmm. a full collection of full zip hoodies like that's crazy like i get it money grab get your money stuff like that but mm -hmm. Money and notoriety, I would want the notoriety first because yeah. the money is always going to come. Yeah, the yes. fashion yes. designers are just so, so funny. Yeah. What about fast fashion? How do you feel about that? Oof. Oh, my goodness. Timu. Sheen. Oh it's goodness. so crazy because I was wearing a shirt that I got from Sheen in college. Okay. Yeah, for me, like, there's times the where way. it's valid. Like, I'm not going to shun anybody who doesn't have the money. To like wear fast fashion from time, but or mm. or for like it's essentials, you know, like yeah. certain mm -hmm. things. But I'm telling yeah. you, you're in access though. Is, if if yeah. you're yeah. doing those halls, yeah. Yeah. bro, like the halls, Yo, oh my god, like bro. fucking twenty pieces for a hundred dollars. That is haram. That is that is, haram. <laughs> that is, that is haram. Like, haram. And then because I, I also out. think like a lot of people it don't. Is. It's wasteful. Like a lot of people can't say they don't know what's going on. Like. How, you how, do, do. how do you get those clothes? If you're like, seeing you know? those halls, the same, the next TikTok is probably the yeah. kids in Congo. Lit like, literally, like bruh. you yeah. don't like yeah. you don't put the two and two together mm -hmm. of just knowing, um, like where uh, your just, clothes are coming from. Yeah, because yeah. it's like it's and it's the same a similar issue why like I don't I guess in the fashion industry want to do super super industry if that makes sense like myself i can't imagine like unless i'm working for a big house which like god willing mm -hmm. i will someday Inshallah. is 
I for the before I die brand, I don't ever want to be on the set schedule of fashion weeks mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Like obviously I will do shows from time to time, but consistently doing four shows, three shows a year is absolutely yeah. insane. Getting and what it takes to do that and the exhaustion that it takes, honestly, I feel like the aspect of getting into the cycle of clothing and just that that whole cycle takes away from brands more than it does mm-hmm. kind of like help them because Enhancing it's them. almost like if you're actively because even myself i really learned that with my own fashion show like i put the collection out like the fashion show like did the fashion show and i mm-hmm. wanted to drop the collection like the week after mm. and then yeah. i'm sitting on i'm like i don't even like this why am i rushing myself to put this out it's just because i know people are gonna say real. when is this coming out and yeah. s- i'm sorry but y'all have to wait no that's real honestly that's you valid. know i kind of feel like that about the valentine's day shirts now oh what you mean we made these valentine's day shirts um the little heart ones mm. and now i look at them and i'm like it was so ass that's good cool. and like maybe it's because yep. i don't like how it looks on me but <laughs> wow, that's crazy. But that's no i that's was cool. just like yeah it's just like a mm, Mm, I didn't even like the quality of the shirt, like that cut. Mm. I fucking hated that halter top, but it was like, it wasn't even a halter. It was like, <laughs> it was a weird tank top, but yeah. we could, you know what? Trial, and, what trial and error. I exactly. think that's a, that's a number, another key thing of, of just, if you want to do fashion, yeah. you have to fuck up a lot before you get good. It's mm-hmm. just what it is. You're going to spend a decent amount of money. Like before I even dropped my first collection, I probably spent a thousand dollars easily. And at the time that was a lot of money because that was like Office Depot $400 checks mm. at the time. So that like mm. anytime I had like a fucked up like line from manufacturer, I'm just, it, it's like, it feels like the end of the world because it's like, damn, I had $400. I spent $200 to make this and I mm-hmm. can't put any of it out. But yeah. if you want to kind of have that long term just success, you mm-hmm. have to just do it right and do it your way and not force yourself to just put something out because you feel like something has to be put out. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I wanted to go back to what you said about like um, certain like brands having a distinct style. You know, I feel like I've been thinking about that question. I'm like, what brands do I like that have a really distinct style? And I think like Vivian Westwood is one of them. <sighs> Love her. Like definitely. R.I.P. The, yeah, queen. R. I. the real queen, queen of England. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> no, and she like, I feel like she truly like, like there's a whole anime like that just you know surrounds her style and like her whole aesthetic like imagine being that influential do you like have any other brands that you look at and you're like this even locally you've shaped locally i'm not gonna lie i think the only brand that i would really look at locally is filthy i was hoping you said that like those are the two that i'm like okay filthy and straight rats cool everybody else i'm not gonna lie it's not that it's bad but it's just there's not i they're not I, I can see that they're not like going all the way, if mm. that makes sense. Because I know I I could I sense that that in myself, like when I w- didn't feel like I had my own distinct style, of where it just feels like okay, like I can do white backdrop, I can put this out. There's no like, I feel like maybe I'm just tooting my own horn, but when you see mm. a before I die image of like oh like you can see that's before I die, like the colors, like yeah. I, I have a col- a little color palette. Your brand I, is strong. Yeah, uh, and and I just feel like there's a lot of where they don't take that extra step. Like, mm. I feel like those two brands, Stray Rats, and, and obviously Stray Rats is a whole nother realm, but, yeah, for but, sure. but like locally, like really like grassroots brands is, mm. is really just filthy. When I want to say, it. yeah, the thing I really appreciate about, you know, the two brands you, you named and you as well is that it's not just y'all just taking a certain printing on your bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and that's why I feel like a lot of brands like kind of like fuck up. Like, they think like they really on some fashion shit. <laughs> Cause they're With going t-shirts. and fucking you just doing, sc- you know what I mean? You just screen printing. A des- it's just graphic design, like yeah. which is fire. But that shit can go on a poster. Like you don't yeah. really have to just I, go I on a feel, shirt. Feel like you feel me? There's a lot of you like misconception when it comes to brands. Like there's there's merchandise and there's a exactly brand. yes like, yes. Mm-hmm. You just like slap something on there and you just make graphic tees. I'm sorry, but you're not a clothing brand. Like it's that's merch. not a full brand. Yeah. Like that's merchandise. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. for sure. I thought we did it. Yeah, because I feel like. The, I feel like it, and it doesn't mean that like you can't get to that point. Like you sure, obviously because have I was to start making, I, I could only afford t-shirts. I was you using exactly. Printful, yeah. you know what yeah. I mean? And like yeah. I don't even know how to sew, but like when I wanted to be like 
in my design shit, I would just like draw by hand and I'd cut yeah. up fabrics and I'd just go to Michael's and like buy blanks off Amazon. And I'm like, Box I can make this something. Figure, you figure it out. Sewing you know? is so hard. You're really creating. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? You're really creating something. Like you can do you can do the best with what you got. What yeah, did Mariah Carey always. say? Yeah. I'm going to do the what I can with what I got. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> period. No um, period. I mean, what time is it right now? It's one twelve. One twelve. Real quick, I, I want to ask one, 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 one more question. One more yeah. question. Mm-hmm. So, like, you know, you have any, like, you know, influences from media? Because, like, you know, I, I like anime. I, I don't know if you've ever, like, incorporated something like that into Top your stuff three. or has ever influenced you. I you feel like you put me on the spot. Because honestly, I haven't watched anime in such a long time. Yeah, yeah. But I yeah, feel like same. I've kind of just like things that I've watched, like obviously like the the regular Schmegler, Naruto, Death Note, uh, Death Bleach, Note, yes. like you name it. Like I've, I've watched all the like popular shonen besides yeah. One Piece. Mm-hmm. But because I know, because I know, I know. <laughs> Damn it. Fuck. You might get cooked. <laughs> because, <laughs> get cooked right funny here. enough, my brother like started One Piece. And I was like, yeah, like I'll, I'm going to watch it with you. And he's already like episode 500 or some shit and I'm wow. just like shout out that king man I'm yeah. sorry yeah, get, get, get that boy a shout yeah, out okay. what's his name <laughs> shout out Chandler you feel me you, you, I'm gonna watch One Piece one day <laughs> <laughs> literally my nephew was born turned three uh, is about to turn three years old and has known more One Piece than I do like oh. literally they watch One Piece they literally watch One Piece together like that's cute. literally that's like so set cute. him up right here like if you show him a picture of Luffy he'll tell you like yeah this is Luffy like he does X, Y, and Z like oh his, my God. His, 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 his fruit is this like he'll, he'll tell you like no, everything yeah that is so cute he, he honestly, he probably knows more One Piece than I ever. Dude, I love right how now. like um, those those animes that you mentioned like yeah. have such distinct styles. Death Note influenced me. Oh my god, yeah. altered my brain chemistry and altered like my fashion. <laughs> Like, I wanted to be Misa so bad. <laughs> like I wanted to be her so yeah. bad. I love how uh, you've seen Hunter Hunter. Or no. No. Oh Damn. my god. I know. I know. Damn. I know. Please. That boy. Don't. That boy. Well, Kiwa. I love you stepping out. Oh, Please, uh, I want it. Wow. Love I'm, I'm going to catch up, Prolo? I promise. <laughs> I'm going to catch up. Exactly. I'm getting I'm getting I'm yeah. getting yeah, yeah, it's, it's vibes though, but it just got to be anime. Like, any other media has it. Yeah, has, movie. Is there any influence Ooh, in yes, that really? Yes, 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 yeah. yes. Even with just this, if you don't mind, I actually want to pull this up because I, I yes, kind of like ri- r- wrote this down. No, I would love you. Of just inspiration for this collection in general. Oh yeah. I so my references for this collection are Eternal Sunshine of a Spotless Mind, the movie. Oh my wow. god. Um, the Truman Show, the movie. Truman. Yeah. It's summer, <laughs> the movie. D- Jim Carrey core. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Requiem for a Dream. I don't know if you guys ever yeah. heard of that. It, it's very. Um, if you look at it, I think you can definitely see kind of the overall design and and aesthetic aspect that I'm going for in this collection. If you see that movie, like okay. it's very. Mm-hmm. Odd, I don't know. It's very oddly shot. Like, yeah. But it's oddly shot in like a way where you won't forget the movie at all. Like, mm. if you see that movie once, like you'll remember s- like the iconic scenes. It's like, mm-hmm. uh, honestly, I don't even, I don't know how to explain it more than just like a crash out <laughs> movie. Like everybody's <laughs> just crashing out. Like okay, okay. it literally starts. I love with, that phrase. Um, they're, I think they're like the starting scene is like him, like these t- the two main characters are like stealing a TV or something like that from, mm-hmm. lo- like locally, like down the street from where they live, and oh they sell it for drugs, and it just mm. starts from there. And you can what's it called? A uh, Requiem for a Dream. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, I'll tell it's, it's, but it's a it's a very good movie. Okay, um, what other films? Also, there's a a poem by I don't know how to pronounce his name Paul L Eldward called Your Your Voice Your Eyes. That's a huge inspiration for this as well. Okay. You want to read it? Um, you have you have it or not? I don't. I don't have okay, okay, that's vibes. That's vibes. Um, <laughs> do you want to talk more about Project Ember real quick? Oh yes, yeah, for we'll sure. Love to hear about it. Um, can I try and call Alien really quick? Yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead. But um. Cause I know she, I know she wants to talk her. I love the Truman Show. That movie also altered my brain chemistry. Truman Show. Yeah. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I love that show too. Yeah. No, and like you it know, makes I mean, you movie. think. Like yeah. I was like, where are the cameras at? <laughs> cut, cut the cameras. That their whole life, bro. Whole. I life. I know they're watching me, bro. Cause I feel like stuff happens in my life, and I'm like, the weapons that are formed against me are prospering right yeah. now. So, I, so like, there's no way they were intentionally created for show. me. These weapons were created for me. Exactly. Against me, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like they're taking a date. Hey, can you talk? Hey. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, it's good I didn't have you by the mic, but I'm I'm live right now. Do you wanna do you wanna say some words? We're talking about Project Amber now. What? We're talking about Project Amber now. We're we're live. I didn't get that the the other thing she said on the camera. <laughs> <laughs> 
cool, cool, cool. I would just okay. love to know, like, know her process, like, what her thought process was behind it and her creating it. Even Wait, just how you guys yeah. came together. Oh, mm-hmm. hello. My name is Aster. I just, I just, uh, nice to meet you. Um, nice to meet you. I'm so sorry about this. <laughs> no, it's fine. I hope you had a great flight. Bi- business is business. Um, Be safe. My first question I want to ask is just, like, how have you guys, like, came together, you and Adrian? How did I? How do I know Adrian? How do you guys come together to work to work on on, on your collection? Honestly, um, I modeled for him in a photo shoot in like 2019, so, and then throwback. just started kind of giving him my opinion on things. And now I am in the position where I am now, where I have the women's collection side yeah. of Before I Die, Before I Die Fem. So it all started with a photo shoot, to be honest. That's fire. That's fire. How did, so how did like how did like how did it go from there? Like from like you know her giving her opinion, and you being like, I need this opinion, bro. It was it was just like everything she was saying, I needed to hear. Like I I feel like before Ali, I had a lot of like what I was kind of telling you guys before in the beginning of the interview of people just telling me what I needed, like what I wanted to hear versus what I really needed to hear. And Ali would be the one to be like, Nah, you should do it this way. And I'm like, Damn, like okay, like that was a little rude, but okay. But then like. <laughs> She was so right about every like she started being so right about everything like she yeah. hit everything on the head and funny enough like me and Ali literally went to all school like all like whole education K through twelve together and did not speak to each other what? Like, they didn't know each other oh, elementary we met, like post graduation after I graduated yeah it was I I like we knew we knew oh, it was just. Yeah, like, knew of each other, because, like, kind of, like, similar friend groups. Like, my, my best friend, Amaya, like, literally um, kind of also um, knew, Al, like, literally knew Ali, like, that whole time as well. My, my best friend, Sammy, as well, um, knew of Ali. So it's kind of, like, looking back on it, it's almost like it was, it's very weirdly, like, meant to happen. Same with Sebi. Like, I literally met Sebi, like, <laughs> right after, I think this was maybe, like, 2019, like, right out of high school, I met Sebi. Um, we didn't, I've literally known Sebi since middle like, school too. It's crazy how like everyone in our team is interconnected literally. one way or another. Like we we really don't recruit like everybody's family. That's that's like, like that was meant to be. Yeah. Truly, yeah. truly, yeah. Fox. So I, I also I want to ask you know like how do you feel about this um like this next line coming out like you know the work you put in, Fire. how much time you put in like seeing it like seeing the clothing in fruition like how do you feel about that? I'm honestly pretty excited. I feel like we're doing a lot of new things that we haven't like done before that we've been wanting to do especially with like the femme stuff coming out as well but um project amber has like pieces that we've never even thought to do before because we wanted to make sure we were in the space to do them right and do them like Mm -hmm. how we fully wanted to so i'm grateful that we are in that position that it's like all of our everything in our imaginations coming to fruition and we are able to see it and hold it and sell it and other people are able to love it as well what what does his name come from? Project Ember. I think I can speak to that a little bit more. Um, I for me, Project Amber literally was like the, like I was, because I keep referring back to our own interview, but like I was saying mm-hmm. in the kind of like beginning of the interview where I had so much of just living, I guess going in a direction where I didn't feel really comfortable in, where I just felt like I wasn't growing as a person. Like the business was booming, everything was going so right, but I just felt so lost in the fact that I like at the time uh to be completely honest with you at the time like I feel like I was nowhere near as close to God as I needed to be yeah. so I literally took a year off like a, bit, a year plus now cel- of celibacy about just like really kind of mm-hmm. getting my mind frame right on so everything. that's where the whole no host yeah because I'll be I'll be talking about that all the time oh yeah no, we be seeing your story yeah. like, we are so gonna talk we're gonna get into that too yeah. No, because everyone will be silent. Everyone will be minding their own business. And I'm like, I have no <laughs> bitches. Just so everybody knows. Hide your girlfriend, but I don't even want her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No high key. <laughs> because it, it just, I feel like it's almost like imagine being, you know, you turn 18, you're dropping a collection, it, it buzzes a little bit. You turn 19, mm-hmm. it buzzes, buzzes, buzzing. And then I think I was 20 when I took like a full year off of just like not having a brand, whatever. I was focused on school, other things, da da da. Mm-hmm. Um, got fired from my job, COVID happened. And I was like, oh, I have nothing else to do but make clothes and I mm-hmm. have rent to pay. So I, I kind of need to make clothes. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's where like the whole like second boom came. Like 2020 to 2021 is where I feel like I really started to pop off by that summer we were like yeah we got to do a tour like mm-hmm. that's when we did the tour and everything like that but during that whole process I feel like I wasn't necessarily evolving like mm-hmm. I very it very much was like okay like everything imagine like you're 18 and all of your dreams are happening right in front of you what that does for your ego mm-hmm. and you're 
at, you know, you could be in New York, you'd be in Atlanta, and there's, you know, just the 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 oh, women just stay, staying mm. after the public. Like, yeah. where are we going after this? Yeah. Oh, where are we partying? Oh, where are we going God. after this? Please. Not like, We're not going nowhere. Like, not, like, yeah, now. I say, I'm saying that now, but back then <laughs> okay, I'm like, okay. I mean, we got to be in B, you know, yeah. we can go out, what are we trying to do? And it's, and it's almost like, do. I felt like, but a lot of that felt like I was doing because it was mm-hmm. expected of me. Like, oh, mm-hmm. he's the star of the show, he needs mm-hmm. to go, you know, you got to fuck bitch, you got to pop bottles, you got to not. Yeah. One, spending a lot of money where I did not need to spend money. Yeah. <laughs> like, I was Make wilding. smart financial choices, kids. Um, and, and that also came with just like, damn, like, I'm living this life that I don't really want to live right now. Like, mm-hmm. a lot of it was just like, I need to get away from this. Yeah. So that whole year of celibacy, and this to me, Project Amber, like, literally Amber, in terms of like, it's mainly because I picked that name because of the color, but also just what it signifies. Like, Amber also signifies hope, like the color itself. Mm-hmm. So to That's me, so it beautiful. was like a kind of like a, a ode to myself of like, okay, like, I can be in this game and not lose myself. Yeah. Because I think about the stuff that happens now. Versus even what will be in six months from now, mm-hmm. a year from now, where I don't want it to be s- something where my ego is just so high, where I'm losing myself. Because yeah. number one, I think having the people around me also is like helps with that of just like having people who can call me out of my bullshit and always having that and yeah. like making sure no matter how far this goes, I'm not thinking I'm above anyone else and that I'm actually in service to people because yep. I wouldn't, I literally wouldn't have gotten here today without Sebi. I wouldn't have gotten where I am without Ali and mm-hmm. all of my friends, you know, like uh, the, the whole crew. Um, because I just felt like it just, you just, you just can't get there alone, you know? Yeah. And, and that Project Amber is literally the ode to just like, hey, like I, I need help and that's okay to have help and yeah. to, to get help because it's not on me. And yeah. I think my ego was telling me for a very long time, it's you, it's you, it's you. And then God struck, like, literally struck me down. Then I was like, oh, it's not on me. And yeah. anything that I did was all thanks to him. And now mm-hmm. that I'm in this space, I feel like such a spirit of just, we can do whatever. Not yeah, I can do whatever. You know what like, like, you already say? For sure. It's us. It's us. It's, it's us. For real. And, yeah. and I think this next kind of push that we're doing and in the direction that we're doing it, everybody's going to eat. Like, everybody. Because... Yeah. If they look into like a deeper dive, it's like, okay, who does your crib direction, mm-hmm. Ashley? You know, who who's your seamstress, Kenzie? Mm-hmm. You know, who does your styling, Liz? Like, I have a whole name. Like, who does pretty much your everything that you don't do, Allie? Yeah. Who does your photography, Michael and Sebi? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, it, it, it's a, I have a whole team. Who does your videography, KP? Like, I have a mm-hmm. full team. You know, That's um, so I think this next everything is just like, I don't know. I'm I'm very excited for it because I feel like I was working at like. Ha- not even half of my power, to be honest mm-hmm. with you. Like, well, not well, half of our power, I yeah. should say. We were, we were almost like, almost at a plateau. At least that I can see myself, because outside everyone is always telling me, "Oh, you guys, you're doing it. You're popping. You're da da da." But to me, if I'm like not right in my spirit, mm-hmm. I can't make clothes because the clothes won't, the clothes won't be right if yeah. I'm not right. It, it's you know that simple. Yeah. I'm excited for you, bro. Thank you. For both of you guys. Mm-hmm. Is there anything you want to ask? No. I did want to ask. Um, how did you both know you were ready to, you know, do pop-ups in other states? Like, what what did you feel like? What what were the signs, I guess? Like, did you go off of proof? Did you go off of data? Or were you just like, It was, it? Uh, at first it was, it was a little combination of both. Like, definitely. It was hearing from people and then, like, seeing where, like, our orders were being placed as well. Mm-hmm. So you would, like, look at that Like data a combination. Yeah. yeah. That's so cool. And also just wanting to kind of inject ourselves into the hubs, you know, like mm-hmm. there's always Atlanta, you know, New York, like L.A., <coughs> L.A., just I'm not saying that for any particular reason, but L.A., um, you know, I think <laughs> I think of just kind of injecting ourselves into the, the big hubs, you know, because that's where we eventually want to set up our bases. Like I want to have a home, yeah. an office in Miami, New York, L.A., like just just to kind of like really. I guess in, inject our seed into just like like we're here, you know, yeah. because staying local will only do you so much. Like I don't want to be, we don't we don't want to be the Broward brand. We want to be the we want to be before I die the global brand. Like yeah. that, not even just U.S. Like because we have we get orders from Canada. We get orders. I, my first order ever online. Funny enough, fun fact. If you're watching this right now, I love you. And can you please contact me so I can send you something? <laughs> my first order online was from fucking Australia. That's crazy. That's fire. Like. 
it was the craziest thing yeah. because Whoa. it's like you think one i was like i don't do I even know anybody in australia like what the fuck <laughs> two the shipping was honestly completely insane because i didn't have like the i don't have the same like shipping carriers and access that i do have now mm -hmm. and i was just like trying to ship on like fedex or whatever and that shit cost me like 92 dollars wow. obviously now i know like i have a lot more connects to shipping and things like that i'll never do that ever again mm -hmm. but it literally was like a 60 dollar hoodie that i paid like hundred and something dollars to ship but i just did it because i was like yo australia yeah. you need to have this you need it like mm -hmm. if you uh, if you if you see this please contact me i want to send you something australia. Shout out Australia. <laughs> Shout out Australia. Shout out to the Aussies. Seriously. I would literally, I would literally fly them. Like, if you're saying this, I would literally fly you out. Like, seriously. Take him up on the offer. Yeah. Like, comment below. I, I hope you see this. <laughs> well, it was so nice talking to you, Ale. I hope you have a safe, safe trip. And I have so much fun. Thank you so much for talking to us. Here you go. Of course. Thank you for letting me call in. Yes. No Dude, problem. Have a great day, Art. We know how important it is. Oh, Sam, are well, you right? You right, my fault. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, girl. <laughs> Bye. See you later. I'll call you uh, after the interview's done. Yeah, I'll let you. Okay, cool. Ciao. So, there, I ain't gonna lie. Like, this conversation can go forever. Like, so much yeah. more stuff I want to talk to you about, but I am more so excited to see you spin. Cool. Are you ready for that? Yeah. All right, let, yeah. let's do it. Let's do cool. it. Let's do it.